Um, yes. There is controller support. Haha. <laughs> awesome. Back in 1995, it's... I mean, I've, first time I'm playing this game. Just, uh... Oh, jeez, the CRT effect. Should, should I have it on, or... Just have it off. D-pad, has D-pad. Ah, shit. Uh, there we go. <laughs> It's a kind of retro take on the old survival horror games like Silent Hill for the PlayStation 1. the tower. Guess I'll make my way there. That's a tower? <laughs> now it's... Oh my god. Alright, this is less Resident Evil or Silent Hill and a little more alone in the dark. Oh my god. I guess nostalgia and all that, but... It's, uh... Looks a little more alone in the dark. And the idea that it looks like shit. potato. Nope. That's not what I do. Why don't I go upstairs? <laughs> Stay away from the flying potato with arms. Oh, shit. That's where I came from. I gotta push a button to hit the thing in the door and then another button to open it. Hey, is that a weapon? How do I use it? Oh my god. <laughs> I know, I guess, uh, the, I guess the idea being that you know, they could have done a better job making it look more like PlayStation as opposed to, say, like an early 3D MS-DOS game or something on, like, the Jaguar. There's a lot of ghosting and very low precision in terms of, like, the geometry. How jerky the movement is. You know, it's, it's running at like 17 frames per second, but even then it still should look smoother than it is. Oh shit. And everything's moving slow. Now I guess that was... I don't know if there's that many people who have a lot of nostalgia for quite what we're looking at here. Alright, so there's a key on the roof I gotta go get. Oh, look at that. Well, they're they're mimicking, in a sense, 
the kind of texture warping that you saw on the PlayStation 1. Now, I'm pretty sure they're just mimicking it. They're not, it's not actually happening. hurts my eyes a little bit. The low frame rate, that is. The PlayStation 1 had this kind of unfortunate graphical effect that went on as a result of uh, textures warping or having an appearance of warping because of the texture filtering. Is that thing still alive? Okay. Okay, there's a key. Yay! You have one voice message. Ah, my ears. Ah, oh, so you finally come to. Where am I? Got a wrench. Like I said earlier, head to the roof, take a left as soon as you're out. If you need a weapon, you already uh, told me not to go up there. Just take a look at the floor here. It's got that kind of fairly distinct texture warping that was kind of common on the PlayStation 1. Now I've been, I've been sort of failing to refer to this for the past few minutes. But the PlayStation 1 suffered from an unfortunate side effect of the way that it, that it did um, texture mapping and the way that it, and flying potatoes. It couldn't as the angle you were viewing textures changed. PlayStation 1, partly by the nature of its performance, oh, I died. And partly by, oh shit, I went back to title. <laughs> partly by nature of the way that it, that it couldn't operate with accelerated math when using um, floating point variables. Had this terrible texture warping that went on while you were starting to view textures at an angle. It couldn't per pixel go in, kind of warp that pixel, uh, the texture appropriately to the angle you were viewing it. Now this is obviously not actually suffering from that same effect. I, don't, I, I couldn't imagine what engine this is being done in. What, it's not actually going to that effect. They just sort of made the textures with that kind of weird crease in them. I don't know if there's that much nostalgia for this era of gaming that they're trying to replicate. It's clearly taking more of a cue from from Alone in the Dark than it is from Silent Hill. And Silent so Hill was kind tower. of what I was expecting when I went and Guess purchased I'll make this my way Steam. There. <laughs> to play alone in the dark clearly a game that resident evil 
saw itself inspiring, inspired by. Now that I know where the key is, I should be able to just get to where I left off. to you if you were wearing headphones for that. Didn't pick up any of those items, but oh, whatever. So you finally come to. Where am I? Why do you have a doctor's coat? A lot of information being relayed to you, not through character dialogue or any of that kind of stuff, but through these sort of expositional um, pages that we're flipping through. Kind of the lazy storytelling that you saw back, back then. There's a lot of beds in this room. But look, yeah, look at the, the texture creasing. That's only because... Oh, shit, whoop. Oh, sure. Killers in the toilet. Oh man, it's really obvious what they tried doing it here. Look at that texture on the floor. And the resolution that the game is running at is terrible. Now, I could be wrong here. Hard to, it's hard to really tell, but maybe the, well, the character, everything is clearly polygonal, but maybe it's just because the textures on the characters are more complex, and the environment is more static and simplistic. It kind of looks, the resolution is really low. Now, granted, the resolution on most PS2 games was like 240 by 320 or some shit like that. Didn't look this bad. Die, potato. Oh, you've been baked. Is it not even gonna react? Oh, there we go. It bit nothing. Even, even uh, Alone in the Dark played faster than this. Alone in the Dark was, of course, uh, like a PC game, primarily. I guess later on there were console versions of it. Alright, that'll do it. Time to go back to the dock. But it was made to run on, like, MS-DOS system, so it didn't have a lot of hardware to work with. And it tried doing 3D graphics. If I'm remembering it correctly, the character models and such were less detailed than what I'm looking at here. Jeez. Oh, 
all the gameplay conventions that they're lampooning here. <laughs> like the bad level design of you walking somewhere they didn't want you to go, so they just sort of turn and get back. <laughs> oh look, they do have a texture warp going on here. Look, it's not, it's, it's straight there. And as you move, it gets really warped. I don't know, man, that might just be a trick that they're doing. What is this thing in the corner? A fire extinguisher? I have it. Turn the volume down. The audio of this game hurts my ears a little bit. You all done? Ah, got one more task for you. Yeah, you have no choice. He asked you to go down there for no fucking reason, so... Yeah, you have no choice. The lights are on. Is this where... Oh, oh we gotta go back to the roof. The B button to accept is kind of odd. Kind of reminiscent of some early PS1 games, or... Where typically the PS1, at least in the US, the X button, which is at the bottom of the four action buttons, the lowest one, is the accept button. And the circle, which was to the right, was the cancel button. For some Japanese games, though, that was backwards, like most famously, I'm going to say Final Fantasy VII was that way. They seem to be doing it that way here. I mean, I'm not using a PS1. Uh, PS1 or 2 or 3 controller, using a 360 controller, which maps them ABXY. Get back here, you little boy. There you go. Mashed potato! There we go. Oh, another one. Maybe there's some way I could still do it. Alright, let's uh, try it hard. Fuck. Oh, okay. Hold on. Now, these CRT filters are usually terrible. They don't look anything like what a CRT used to actually look like. At least it's less grating on the eyes. I would definitely like to see these people try again. Go a little bit more recent in terms of gameplay. I'm in a 
other potato. Get a sales bonus, bro. I know they're putting loading screens in just for the sake of harkening back to the old days where you had the disc based medium and it would take a while to load the data into the memory that you needed to. Of course, that wasn't the only reason why games had loading screens back then. But they're even going so far as to show the disc spinning. Especially considering what we're looking at here. There's no way that it's actually taking that long to load. Oh, new monsters. Oh. Nice camera angle, asshole. Great, I missed twice. And I'm dead. And honestly, I don't care. They must have done something like loaded the game and then just sort of made you wait for a few seconds <laughs> before transitioning you to the next room, because I can't imagine what I'm looking at here with something that takes a long time to load. In fact, I'm going to go and take a second and try to figure out how big the executable file is. It's 15 megabytes. <laughs> I got more system memory than that. I got more of a larger cache on my processor than that. So it's clearly just putting in wait states, waiting until it seems like enough time has passed that it would have taken like a PlayStation 1 to load. That's an interesting idea. I think the execution's flawed. They could have made it a little more Silent Hilly than Lone in the Darky, and I would have probably been a bigger fan of that. The game was, of course, going to be clunky. It had to be that way. If it wasn't clunky, then it wouldn't have been retro, would it? I'm going to look into this developer to see if they've got anything else out, though. I mean, this didn't cost a lot. I got it on Steam. So, uh, anyway, well, there it was uh, back in 1995. 